Hello everyone and welcome to a special testing episode in my Beyond History series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. I believe this is the first time we've been in sandbox mode. This is sandbox mode, so this is not career mode. And we're actually going to test something for once. Uh, normally, what you see in the series is the first time I've tried it. Uh, I'm relying on prior experience that was really obvious with the previous episode with the Nerva launch and the fact that, of course, the Nerva didn't decouple properly. Obviously, if I had tried that before, I would have known that that would happen and anticipated all the problems and fixed it. But that was the first time that launched, and generally speaking, in the series, it I don't do testing beforehand. And the reason for that is if I do the testing, everything will work perfectly. I mean, there's, there's no particular reason for it to vary from testing to the actual conducting of the mission, given it's the same install and everything. I mean, maybe there's something, but it's unlikely. So I do it mainly for suspense reasons and to make sure that, uh, you know, keep things interesting. And that's all well and good, but there are times when my prior experience is not sufficient to ensure that there's a good probability of success. I mean, good, you know. A reasonable probability of success and that is especially true of shuttles <laughs> so here we are uh, testing um, an interesting system I think you'll agree and the goal is there's a, a simple shuttle to bring crew to low earth orbit it's got six crew and well not right now it doesn't because we're testing we've got a probe core in the cargo bay it is a Thor avionics unit right here but there is so much that can go wrong with this particular system that it is prudent to just try it out first. I haven't done a flight test yet. We'll, we'll get to that. I just want to see if the stack works and then anything to do with uh, figuring out the aerodynamics of the shuttle portion itself. We're going to have to tweak and just make sure that the mass is about the same for the rest of the stack. So um, I'm going to control it manually first and uh, then I'll figure out the KOS script and that'll cause a lot more havoc as well. We will attempt a roll program initially and that's just to see how stable it is. But SAS is on, throttle is up. What we have here is four NK33 engines and then on this little booster segment we've got two NK31s. So back to the Nico engines but uh, and I would have really liked to have you know, F1, one F1 engine here, for instance, but it doesn't throttle. So the thrust weight ratio would get abominably high. Uh, these do throttle, and also we can just shut down two of them, which I'll probably eventually do for balance reasons. Okay, I'll talk more about it as we go up, but ignition. Nope, I'm not getting the sound on my end. It's that. Okay, launch. Okay. Have to do some manual control here. Obviously, not as well balanced as I would like. Hmm. I don't want to light the NK31s just yet, but it might be prudent to do so. Oh yeah. Of course, the NK31s do not have a very good. ISP at sea level, that's why we're not lighting them. Well, it's probably too late now. How about we turn this into a flight test? I think that would be a good idea, right? Okay, well, we're, uh, we're sort of going this way now. Alright. I'm using full pitch authority here. Oh, not anymore. Okay. No, 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 no. Okay, I thought I was alright, but not so much. Okay, well, it might be a good time for me to test the launch abort system. No, that's not it. I'll, we'll get to those engines in a bit. So it does have these little SRBs to pull away from anything. And it also has parachutes. So... Yeah. That was a lot of mass, by the way. It's um, one ton, uh, more than one ton, to put the parachutes and these little SRBs and the decoupler as well. But we've got them. 
See, we care about our kerbals, really. Though it would be better if I map those onto the abort button. Everything seems to be alright. In fact, a little bit OP. The thrust weight ratio pr provided by these SRBs is uh, about 8. So not as much as a normal abort system, but pretty good. As far as the supplies in this portion are concerned, oh, well, we don't have any crew. But it's got a, a, like two days and six hours worth of supplies here, and then in the back end of the shuttle, we've got another portion uh, It sums up to about 21 days worth for six crew. All right, uh, let's just revert. Oh, uh, no, um, yeah, let's revert to vehicle assembly and I can show you things in detail. Okay, well, I think I... I understand where I went wrong. Uh, this uh, center of thrust is with these on. Uh, it's worse when they're not on. So that's a bit of a problem. Also, it'd be nice to... Uh, I've um, attached these engines on in pairs. So maybe it'd be better if I could like throttle these down. But then again, it barely gets off the ground as it is. It could be possible to shift these. And what I mean is like this. It's a little bit weird, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. You'll note that these engines are shifted in relation to the to the tank, and that's because of the placement of the shuttle itself. I've called it the crew master. So there's the crew master. And these engines are shifted uh, to the center of mass produced by moving this closer to the large booster. And of course, we wanted it to be moved closer to the large booster because it's just weird having this huge gap in the middle otherwise. Maybe another fairing over here would be nice. So the, the key to all of this, if you will, are these little engines here. These are candle engines. And... They're from the KSB Interstellar pack. Basically what they are is uh, liquid hydrogen passed through RTGs. So they're little RTGs and liquid hydrogen gets passed right through them. They don't get as much ISP as like a Nerva. And in relation to the mass, they don't get much thrust either. Each of these is four kilonewtons. Here, I'll show you their stats. Though you won't be able to see their ISP until we're hopefully using them in orbit. But baseline 650, though that's with liquid fuel. I think it gets about the same with liquid hydrogen, maybe a little bit better. But uh, 4 kilonewtons, that'll actually change because of the fuel as well. It has uh, the swap fuel, well, actually switch mode. Next, oh, no, no. Uh, next propellant is the one where you change it from hydrogen. But uh, KSB Interstellar has its own way of handling all these things. So it can use multiple different uh, propellants. And yeah. It's just uh, take an RTG, pump fuel through the hot radioactive core into a nozzle. And that's it. Costs 5000 a piece. So it's really expensive. I mean, this is not the cheapest option if it was expendable, but it's not. We're bringing them back, so that's good. It's very, very, very important to bring them back because even in relation to a pretty advanced engine, even in relation to the F1, the F1's only like 3000 So, yeah. These are very expensive little engines, but they allow us to just carry liquid hydrogen here. Now we can't use liquid hydrogen for the RCS, so we're carrying extra RCS tanks in here. Uh, Arizine and N204. That's a little bit sad, but what can you do? And of course you saw the docking port in there as well. And the decoupling occurs here. We've got a decoupler. Let's open the right there. And we've also got backup fuel cells, though the RTGs should be able to provide us power. And we've actually got uh, liquid oxygen for the fuel cells up here. Of course, we've got plenty of liquid hydrogen to use. And uh, here we have the separation motors for the abort system. And yeah, uh, there are a lot of reasons for various interesting bits on here, but uh, like the radiators to cool the tank and everything and uh, the choice of engines here but I think we need to just uh, try things out again this time we'll light these at the surface as well even though they're not surface engines and we'll see how that works for us 
Oh, I, I should have mentioned uh, uh, four kilonewtons. Uh, these candle traveling wave reactor engines are 0.1698 tons. Compare that to the Astris engine and uh, wherever that is, there it is. This is about a third of the mass and gets five times the thrust. So there are a lot of drawbacks to using these candle engines is what I'm trying to say. And whether it's good to just have them use hydrogen and give us a high ISP and whether that's worth it or not, we'll just have to see. It certainly makes the rest of the launcher lighter, right? Because now we are only getting about a thousand meters per second of delta V from it. Actually 800, I think. I think that's lying. About 800 meters per second of delta V. So just the normal stuff for low Earth orbit. And uh, yeah, it's a good question whether this is a good way of doing it. But 16 tons for the entire crew master makes the launcher much lighter. Okay, so here we go again. And of course, we're using kerosene and oxygen. If we were using more efficient fuels, it'd be even better, of course. Uh, a much lighter launch vehicle, but so far it's pretty trim, I think you'll agree. And um, yeah, I did put the liquid oxygen on top and the kerosene on bottom, so we are doing that. Okay. Ignition. And launch. Still not perfectly stable. Let me see if uh, Smart ASS can handle this. Uh, I want 180 actually on the roll. Ooh. Maybe shouldn't have had to do that. I'm just going to have a try go straight up for a little while. We're using about 40% of our yaw and pitch. We're close to maxing out our pitch. I'll shut off the tail two engines. Okay. Well, it's still safe. We do not have any cross-feeding between this tank and that, even though it's all kerosene oxygen. Gotta watch out for pushing these beyond their rated burn time. They're rated for four minutes. Okay, I'm gonna shut off those and separate that booster. Okay. Definitely safer that way. I don't remember if these throttle or not. Doesn't seem so. Well, I've left us with too little time to apoapsis this after that. We do have a small reaction wheel in the cargo bay. Well, the engine placement, as it is, seems to be working quite well. That could have gone wrong too. It looks like our booster has a certain amount of unusable fuel though. That's unfortunate. We're deliberately going to make it lopsided so this will re-enter. Well, close enough. Anyway, separation. And now it's a question of whether the candle engine, the uh, candle engines will work. But first, RCS. Okay. And we will activate reiters. I've got to remember that these little candle engines don't exactly have a lot of thrust. Well, anyway, orbit prograde. And... Ignition. Okay, they are working. They're producing 0.11 Gs. But then again, you know, the Space Shuttle OMS engines weren't exactly that powerful either. And they do seem to have a thousand meters per second. So in the VAB, MechJev was correct. Though previously I had also seen some... Oh, actually a specific impulse of a thousand seventy-four seconds. I don't know how that's calculated. Actually, um, as we get more technology, these should be better later on. 
and they'll allow us to use different propellants than just hydrogen right now. But that's higher ISP than I expected. May need to reconsider that. I don't know if people are going to be happy with that, but uh, uh, yeah. Again, just passing uh, liquid hydrogen through an RTG. They are expensive. So there is that. The four of them combined means uh, 20,000 funds compared to the launcher. The whole mission was like 60,000 something, I think. So pretty big part of the mission. These little thrusters have the best heat tolerance. That's why we've got them. And of course, if we're aborting, I don't particularly care whether those SRBs toast those RCS thrusters. Um, that's not retrograde, man. Hold on. Maybe, maybe there's a time for SAS instead. Or not. Okay, well, uh, no, I can get it to retrograde fairly easily. Don't know what the SAS and smart ASSs of this world are having a problem with. So I'll get into a circular orbit first, and then we will deorbit. Um, Power-wise, doesn't seem like we're depleting electric charge at all. So RTGs are working. Might be able to ditch the fuel cells. Now I've done absolutely no flying with this, but uh, the center of mass and center lift are in good positions. Uh, whether it's full or empty. So there's that going for us. Everything else I have no idea. I, can't, I have no idea whether it could take off from a runway or anything. Not that that's something it should ever have to do. But so far, uh, considering this is only the second flight of this ever, uh, it's doing pretty well. I don't know how to manually change the ISPs of these. I've tried tweaking ISPs of the KSP interstellar engines before, and I wasn't able to do it. Again, it's got its own way of calculating these things, and I couldn't figure it out. It has nothing to do with the stated figure that you see in the VAB. You saw that was like 500 something, but until you actually take them, take them up and ignite them or test them some way, there's no way of telling. And of course, these don't work on the ground, so you really have to try them out in orbit to see what the eyes... Or I'm sure there's some chart somewhere. I, I know there are a lot of charts associated with the KSP interstellar engines, but still... It's uh, tricky to tell sometimes. Alright, so no idea where this should deorbit, but we're going to say, actually let's get the latitude and everything up. Okay, yeah, wow. Something about the RCS configuration on this right now totally messes up Smart ASS and SAS, so I'll just have to turn it manually. Now that's going to be a problem as far as re-entry is concerned because usually I would let Smart ASS hold our orientation. Okay, deorbit burn. I think 40 should do it. Um, maybe we'll try 38. Okay. Here we go. Re-entry is going to take some some practice and probably it's gonna go I mean I don't know how it's gonna deal with this it seems to be very bad at getting us to the right position right now it just uses a lot more thrust than it ought to to do the initial turn and then it has trouble stopping itself there we go maybe if I've already gotten it into the right position it'll be okay we're just going with standard shuttle re-entry parameters. Our center of lift is... It should be in a good position with respect to our center of mass throughout everything. There's no reason for it not to be. In fact, it was more of a problem that the center of lift was too far back. The reason for that is, if we're going to have this decoupling and abort system, we have to make sure that the main wing stays behind that, otherwise it's clipping into that and it'll probably make something explode, right? I mean. If the main wing was further forward than this, uh, half of it would be 
uh, clipping into the screw cabin. And as it is, we put another wing piece here to try and pull the center of the Ford, and we're using the canards for the same reason. Oh, shoot. Uh, I did not want to do that. No, no, shut up, shut up. Although, I guess we could... I was uh, pressing shift because that's how you do things in the VAB, but that's just silly. Um, we could dump the liquid hydrogen, though. That might be a thing to do. Just to make ourselves lighter, but we could do that after re-entry. We're at 134 degrees west. Cape Canaveral is 80 degrees west. And it's 28.6 degrees north. So we're looking at that as we come down. We are approaching the west coast here. We will be too far south to uh, make Cape Canaveral, and this does not have anything like cross range ability. I mean, I guess it has some cross range ability, but I don't know what it is right now. Well, we're only at 95 kilometers and already this cockpit is hot. It's red. So, I don't know. The heat tolerance on the RTGs is great, by the way, so probably no problems there, hopefully. And I see some overheating indicators on our CS units. And those are the ones out front. Now these were the RCS, I mean, this type of RCS unit had the best heat tolerance, but obviously not good enough to be out there. That's gonna hurt our pitch control. Those were pushing the nose up. But looks like, I mean, if we can lose them and still survive, we can just do without them, frankly. I can find another way of uh, placing RCS units. Currently crossing Baja, California at 85 kilometers in altitude. We've still got the tail ones pushing down on the tail, but we pretty much won't know it's bad until we get... Oh, something else blew up. Until we get one of those little temperature readings. Okay, um, looks like the tail tank blew up. That, uh... Hmm. I don't know why it's thrown us off this much. I also don't know why it blew up, but okay. We can reshape it. But it's certainly thrown us off like it created an asymmetry, but it shouldn't have. Um, if it, I mean, if anything, the center mass should have moved forward from that, right? Oh, okay. I think Smarty SS is now overcorrecting. I'm just gonna SAS this. Okay. Oh, it's not good. It was all looking so nice. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Uh, no, don't go too off to the left. I'm not entirely sure why it's going off to the left at all, actually. I'm gonna dump the liquid hydrogen. I don't know why we would be having a problem like that, but just in case that helps. Venting liquid hydrogen in plasma probably wouldn't normally be a good thing to do, but hey, who knows. Well, I think I need more RCS units in better shielded locations on this. If you're wondering about the aerodynamics of the forward portion, it's not good. It's uh, basically plunged. Uh, the center of lift on that is too far forward for it to like fly with its tiny little canard or something. Okay, this is not great. It's really tumbling quite quickly. And like, I don't know why exactly. It should still point like nose forward. There's no reason for it to go like this in particular. Okay, well... I think we need to pull this screw capsule away at this point.
rest of that was not going to be happy anyway. We only have one fin though, that's not nice. Oh, problem solved. The fuel cells are probably gonna blow up. They're attached there. Well again, this is the first time we actually made orbit with this thing, so... No big surprises that we've got a lot of... And the first time it's ever flown in the atmosphere, quote-unquote, flown. So, no surprise that there's, there's some problems. By the way, there is some locked RCS fuel here, just in case we have to separate from the rest of it in orbit for some strange reason, like... RTG containment is gone awry, or the liquid hydrogen tank is about to blow up or something, and it aborts. It could use this RCS fuel in order to in order to deorbit itself. It's not much. And actually I can't control this right now. Oh I forgot about that. I can't actually deploy the parachutes. Obviously if there was a crew member in here they would be able to, but this is going to um yeah, I can't deploy the parachutes at all, I think because there's no controller on here right now. Well, I think at this point, uh, we should at least take a look at the Crewmaster spacecraft in the SPH to see its center of mass, center of lift, and its general configuration, and take a look at what we might be able to do. Okay, so here we are in the SPH, and let's just... Uh, go from front to back here. Um, these little thrusters blew up. They're currently at a thrust limited to 50%. We could uh, undo that. That would help our orientation, but might use more fuel. But I, I didn't think we were too short on the RCS fuel as it was. But um, actually, uh, no, it's not these. Or, oh, maybe this is that one. Oh, I, I made a mistake. It's this one that has the high skin temp, but this one is also 0.9 tons. This one does not have the high skin. They, they look the same, but they're not the same. This one does have the high skin temp. Well, these didn't blow up. Um, I'm, I'm wondering whether I should use them or not. It's possible that we need to work on the RCS. Well, possible. We definitely need to work on the RCS configuration on this, so yeah, I'll do that uh, later on on my own. I'll take a look. I've got RCS build date here and I'll figure it out. Um, this is what it looks like. Let me get that back up. There's a center of mass, center of lift, and ultimate center of mass here. So I didn't think we were going to have too much by way of, um, you know, serious problems at low velocities, but this might be too big a gap for the high velocities during re-entry. We might want to get that a little bit tighter. But again, I can't move the wing up, so I'll take a look at how to fix that in a bit. As long as we keep the mass the same, uh, let's say it's basically 16 tons, um, whatever we do with the launcher will be fine. And I want to nail the launch a little bit better. I want KOS to be able to do it. So let's try a launch with KOS and see if it can handle it. So, yeah, this is going to be interesting. Okay, well, here we go. The KOS script is based on the Space Shuttle KOS script that I have, and so it's just a matter of tweaking all the differences. Right now, I've, I've tried some things with uh, just staging, and we'll see how that works out. I don't know. Uh, so, edit uh, Crewmaster. I'm gonna copy in the adjusted script, but almost certainly not adjusted enough. It does have the row program, as the shuttle does. That's why I've kept it in this orientation, so I can preserve that. Uh, does it need to have that? Uh, it'd be probably better if it didn't, but right now it'll give us important information about stability. So here we go. Unfortunately, KOS is generally better at this whole thing than I am. So you can see it's relatively smooth here. A 
get overrolled there. Oh wait, I might have it going to 51.4 degrees. Oh yeah, because last time I used the shuttle launch script, I was going to the station. It's actually aiming for 51.4 degree inclination instead of regular 26.6. Well, that's gonna make things a little bit harder to get to orbit. I wonder how uh, KOS will handle the RCS on the Crewmaster. If it can handle it better, maybe it'll be able to do the re-entry properly, I don't know. Looking spot on right now. We're really close to maxing out the pitch, but should shut off the tail two engines soon, hopefully. There we go. Good timing. Pretty much max on the pitch when it did that. And then it goes for one more minute on these engines, but I don't know if that's going to be enough or not. We'll see. Uh, I think it could have spent a little bit more time on those engines. We're not going to have enough to make orbit like this. And we had insufficient avionics because we let go too early. Okay, let me revert. Um, it was pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, let's revert and let's hold on to the booster for a little bit longer. All right, edit crewmaster and copy and paste. But um, here you see I changed the target inclination to twenty eight point six this time, and also made sure that we hang on to the booster for thirty more seconds. And that'll bring it to 3 minutes and 30 seconds, still under the 4 minute burn time of the, the rate of burn time of those engines. So we'll see if that's enough or whether we need to go for longer. We've got 30 more seconds to work with in theory. So run Crewmaster. Game crashed. Okay, well, that's all right. I've been doing a lot of building. We will uh, we'll restart. Okay, let us try this again. Run Crewmaster. Interestingly, one side effect of the fact that we have to retain some fuel in here for balance reasons is that that fuel could be used to recover this. If we had relightable engines down here, technically they have one more ignition. But if instead of these engines we had, say, Merlin 1Ds, it could turn out pretty well, actually. We need, of course, uh, double the Merlin 1Ds that we have here. Basically, we need conveniently nine, eight or nine, probably nine. Okay, outer engine shut off. Pitch is getting pretty close to the bottom there. I don't know how much more time we can keep that, but probably need enough time so that we burn another three tons would be nice. Okay, it's doing the roll that the shuttle does. Seemed like only a few seconds until we could unlock controls. It's carrying a Thor core, so it's got a maximum of 65 tons. We don't have quite enough Delta V. Now, when I piloted it, we had enough Delta V, but, you know, it was rather sloppy. But uh, I'll try holding on. Uh, also, our trajectory, we're quite high. Um, let's aim, instead of, we're currently aiming for 270 by 270. Let's go for 210 by 210. Might be a little bit better. But still, we definitely want to be still going up when we decouple this booster. We do not want to be on the way down at that point. The reason we had to use the Thor core, which has a 65 ton limit, 
is simply because we can't fit anything bigger in the cargo bay. We could fit more than one, but that's more mass that we have to carry around with us. Okay, I think I need to tweak the script a little bit. It's not able to go down to zero. That's because of the shuttle. The shuttle has the engine tilt, right? The engines are tilted by 10 degrees. It doesn't need to worry about that. So I need to take that out. Yeah, uh, yeah, this is not much luck there. Okay, we're going to have to fix that up a bit. Let's try again. Okay, well, I hope you enjoy watching this little thing launch because here we go again. Let's not run. I need to edit. So, again, I've given it a little mo bit more leeway to pitch down. Very important. And extended the timing of the booster so that we hang on to it for a little bit longer, but not too much longer. Just an additional five seconds. We'll see if that makes much of a difference. And also, I reduced our target apoapsis and periapsis. And I also fixed it so that it will uh, switch onto the little candle engines as OMS engines and try an OMS burn. It really uses those canards at the beginning, doesn't it? Well, whatever works. Right now, these engines are only giving us 235 on the ISP. Not great having to run them, and of course, if I could replace them with Merlin 1Ds, that or just a single Merlin 1D, that'd be nice. That would be ideal. Not a Merlin 1D vacuum, that would be horrible at sea level as well. Maybe it'd be like eight Merlin 1Ds over here, sea level Merlin 1Ds, and then one on that. Would be fine if we wanted to keep it to uh, kerosene oxygen. Of course, methane oxygen would be even better. Until we can recover the engines, though, I don't think we'll be using uh, Hydrolox engines. Eventually, we might want to re uh, make this recover. Well, I mean, we could make the whole thing recoverable because it is currently reserving fuel. Uh, we could have it try and land or something. Or we could just recover the back end of it and use parachutes and everything. Probably a heat shield, too, because it's going pretty fast already by the time we decouple it. Making this little guy recoverable will be another ordeal. Though if SpaceX can do their second stage, I suppose we could try this. We'll need more margin though, so that means if we have more efficient engines we can do that. Control of Hydrolox is of course we're going to be making everything bigger. The tanks need to be bigger. Of course we're carrying like liquid hydrogen in here, but not much Delta V is coming out of that. If we pack the same volume in with MMH and N204, we get a lot more Delta V out of it, but it also weigh a lot more. Okay, still a little bit off on the avionics. But we technically have enough Delta V this time, if it plays its cards right. Yeah, it's definitely pitching down, because after all, we're already past the target apoapsis. Just hold it at zero. Weirdly, still not as efficient as me doing it manually, even though I was all over the place. Hmm. I feel like I should let it pitch down a tiny little bit here, just to restrain that apoapsis. If we add throttleable engines, it'll try to limit the g-force to 2.4, but these do not throttle. At burnout, I think we get 4 g's just on the spot there. Now it can pitch down a bit. Uh, it might be too late for that, we'll see. Oh, it definitely shouldn't be pitching up. That's a weird oscillation. Hmm, not so good. Okay, I, I can fix this error. Though... Might just want to keep it 
because uh, we want... No, anyway, uh, I'll just fix it. Anyway, let's try this again, but it's still not uh, holding itself in check. We'll try to give it a little bit more authority to pitch down earlier. And overall, the trajectory needs to be a little bit flatter, so I'll fix that. Okay, here we go again. And this will be my last try for this episode. Uh, we might get back into career mode next time and hold off on this. But I'll probably be doing other sandbox testing episodes sprinkled in some of the time. If, if necessary, if we're going to pursue this whole space plane thing. Tell me if you're interested in these little things or not. Uh, also, I am open to names for this other than Crewmaster. Okay, here we go. Okay, we have the shut off of the two back engines. Every look, everything looking fine so far. Watching that time to wap waps is hoping it doesn't get too high. Okay, off goes the booster. I didn't change the timing of that this time. This was mostly trajectory tweaking. And again, as long as we can get the launch right, all we have to do is make sure that the crew master stays 16 tons. And whatever we do to fix its aerodynamics should be alright. This pitch up is to make sure it has time to apoapsis to do the orbital burn and that this does not make it into orbit. And it still does that thing. But. Yeah, I'll have to figure out exactly what to do about that. It's not entirely clear to me what's happening because in theory it shouldn't get to that part of the script when there's no thrust because it's under a condition that says um, that requires there to be thrust. So it shouldn't be throwing an infinity there. The infinity is caused by there not being thrust. Anyway, it's complicated. So not too sure what's up with that. but. Anyway, the important thing is, it does leave us in a position to get to orbit. But I have other fixes to do in order to make sure it can come back from orbit, obviously. So I'll take a look at that in, uh, in a future episode. But we should get on with our existing missions in career mode next time. So, anyway, this will make orbit because uh, we do have our nifty little RTG candle engines. And uh, with this interesting development, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.